It's no secret that Software Mansion is working on a React Native IDE. And now I finally got beta access to their IDE. So in this video, I want to share you my first impression of installing, setting up the IDE and using it in a React Native project so you can get a feeling for what they're cooking. If you're interested, you can also request beta access. I think they're currently adding like 200 people per day because they're getting really a lot of interest in this. So let's see how we can install this. First of all, the React Native IDE is simply a Visual Studio Code extension. I'm going to see here on the Getting Started page. It is a Visual Studio Code or Cursor extension. So I actually haven't used Cursor. I'm kind of interested in trying that out as well. But anyway, we're going to use it for VS Code and we're going to see what we can do. So the current version supports developing on macOS for Android and iOS, managing the simulator, automatically build and launch, debugger, element inspector, integrated console, preview package, expo router integration and easy access. So I definitely want to see how this works. So I downloaded the package. Now it uh, looks like we have to go into VS Code. Uh, so let's open VS Code. Let's go to extensions, say install from, okay, you're gonna probably put that a bit up here so you can see this install from whatever file gonna drop that file and install the extension completed installing react native ide extension so where can i find this now react native ide does it show up somewhere uh i feel like it should at least be somewhere anyway um da -da. okay install for cursor okay i think we can go ahead after installing you should be able to start using the extension by opening your react native expo project in Visual Studio, okay. Uh, open your project, I did this. When you open any file of your project, you can launch the extension from open IDE panel button in the editor toolbar. Okay, I got that button, that looks good. So let's see, I'm here in my application. I will open the React Native IDE. Uh, you can add a new device using the quick action. Um, can we just use like a simulator? Uh, Oh, this is good. This is good. I like it. I like everything that just works when I click on it. And I click on it and nothing happens. I'm, I'm kind of sad, but this looks good. So I think what's going on right now is that this is booting up my iOS simulator. I anyway, maybe do a little bit smaller because we're not really writing code. We're here to look at the stuff. Uh, and we get this integrated preview up here. Uh, we should be able to see some logs. Probably we don't see the build logs. So maybe let's wait until building has finished. Okay, quick note. I thought I was stuck on this screen, but it turns out clicking on this actually shows me down here the logs and something is still going on. So let's wait a second more. All right, the app is loading. I'm so excited because I just pressed this button and it seems to work. Uh, meanwhile, I read through the documentation to actually most of it. So what I want to do is, first of all, I want to place this view somewhere else. Um, it looks like here I can change the location. So I can actually bring this to a completely new window. As you can see, here's my application. Or I could, and I want to bring this back in here. Uh, I should be able to change the location to the secondary side panel. Uh, no, that's actually exactly not, <laughs> not where I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be on the left hand side. Uh, maybe it's just messed up in my case. Uh, okay, where am I at rack of you to display here? No, I wanted this to be on the left hand side. I don't know. I will just place it here uh, and so we can have uh, split view and then I can have my other code up here. Okay, now I completely I think I'm doing exactly what I shouldn't do uh, When you're trying something new initially and that is like playing around with it way too fast because now it looks like it's also No, please don't do this to me. Don't do another build. You already had the build. Everything was fine Can we just run that? Okay, good news, it didn't take that long. So let's see. Here is my app. This is what I usually see when I'm using this inside the iOS simulator, which is so far pretty, pretty cool because I don't have to run the iOS simulator. Um, looks like here are my logs. Okay, that's cool. What else do we have? I think I can directly navigate somewhere. So in my ChatGPT clone, for example, I do have a page called login. So I would love to go to slash login. How could I do that? It seems like it's not detecting my stack uh, layout correctly. Um, okay, it's showing me probably I have to go there once at least. So let me try to log in. 
All right, add some problems using the keyboard, especially doing like an add sign or pasting stuff from here. So a little bit of confusion here with the simulator and it didn't work exactly as I expected it. But now we're back here in my application and what I notice is that I can actually click somewhere. Uh, what was the shortcut? So at least if I do this right here, oh, this is so cool. This is like exactly like web development. I can expect and I dive straight into that component. I really love that this click to inspect is I don't know it's like going to be that important but it is so helpful especially in new projects and like figuring out okay what is this oh okay it's in the explore.tsx so it's the header component stuff that's uh, I'm working on here that is so so helpful um, also we see now I do have the different URLs so I am actually able to go through these and navigate with that almost like in history that is it's it's really good it's really good okay uh let's see if i do something here in my chat view uh i can kind of somehow trigger a function uh let's see let's just do a breakpoint here in use effect if i do a breakpoint um i think it should okay this is not but if i click here uh, how can I trigger that breakpoint? Um, maybe I should do a breakpoint in some other place. Uh, oh, this is actually the explore page. So maybe we already got there. No, we're not. We're not having the breakpoint yet. Uh, we can also, by the way, switch the device text size. Okay, this is interesting. I don't know if I want this. Um, but this, by the way, caused my breakpoint to hit. So if you're a fan of debugging with breakpoints, which I'm honestly, I gotta confess, I'm not really. I used this a few times in the past, but usually I just put in my console lock and lock the stuff. I know uh, the breakpoints and whatever I can access here is a lot better usually, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't, let me know in the comments. Are you a fan of breakpoints or are you doing the poor man's logging with console lock? I honestly don't know. Um, okay, let's continue uh, because I don't want to pause in the debugger. So as highlights, we had click to inspect, which worked. Definitely thumbs up. Uh, we had routing through the URL bar, which I can confirm does work as well. We've seen breakpoints working. Uh, we do have a locks integration. Um, do we see the locks really? Let's put a lock here. Uh, does this work? Okay, so I should probably put this in actual stuff that works. Okay, like this. Um, okay, where are my locks? Oh yeah, here's the lock. Um, it's coming from the explore page. That is pretty cool, I think. Um, I honestly think this is pretty good because this gives me exactly the location of that lock and I can jump into this. I don't know if this works when I just use like expo run and debugging. This could also be potentially really helpful. Now, um, what we can do as well is develop components in isolation. So I wanna test that feature as well. We've already seen a few. Um, and I don't know which combination exactly helped me to like Ah, it was, yeah, exactly. When I right click on my view here, you see this? I get like the um, the hierarchy of that view. So I see that image component or can I click up here that it should give me the icon and I can click here and <laughs> this is so good. This is so good. I love it. This is going to be really, really great. Um, I go here. This is helping so many people because this is exactly what they need. Like, um, Let's just imagine you have the simulator and you think, oh, this image here is maybe misplaced. I want to put this somewhere else. Bada da bing, bada boom. I'm right here at the image. Otherwise, I would have to go like, okay, it is which file and which line and where's the image? It's just completely a game changer for debugging and building my application. I honestly, I'm already sold software mention, shut up and take my money. But there's one more thing that I want to try. So, uh, as I said, we've seen most of that stuff, but we haven't seen develop components in isolation. So there's a preview package that I can use to preview a component. I'm honestly super excited how that works. So let's see, I will do a new simon.tsx, uh, react native functional export component. This is my simon component, okay? 
Um, something, by the way, is messed up. I should have put this in a new window or something. It's just always opening uh, the wrong page. Maybe we should do this meanwhile. So I will change this to a new window and I can just like put a new window to the side and do it pretty much like I would do with a simulator as well. Maybe that counteracts the point of it, but maybe not. Uh, let's see what happens if I know like do my uh, right click here. Yeah, then it goes here. That is way more helpful. So if I now go here, I can and I change this in here. That feels a lot better. But back to my Simon component. You see, I'm getting too excited about this stuff. Um, let's give this a style of background color uh, red. I don't know. And text Simon. So I want to test this component in isolation. It's a bit what Storybook can do as well but they say it's easier okay so let's put in import preview from react native ide that probably means i should install this um as probably a development dependency uh am i allowed to do this mm, that's going to be interesting well it looks like i am so that also means we should be able at this point to find the React Native IDE. Let's see, I will open this up again and we got it. Okay, and now let's see if we can do magic. So I wanna use the preview function from React Native IDE and I wanna preview my Simon component. Okay, this is not assignable to whatever, but it should be like this. Okay, preview, let's do the magic. Um, open preview. Um, what exactly happened? <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, I finally figured that one out. That was an interesting one. There's actually an open discussion here on GitHub. Preview functionality does not work when the file with preview call isn't included in the bundle. So I had to randomly include my component in some page, but of course that is a beta and this is going to get fixed. But what I can do now is develop this component in isolation. So. Uh, I could do, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is going to be so much fun developing stuff and like just using preview and doing, I'm, 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 you know that I'm getting overly excited about new stuff, but this is just so cool. It's, it's not like this is completely groundbreaking, but it's definitely a big step forward in terms of how you can potentially develop your React Native applications. So. Just looking at this, I think we covered everything. You can add your uh, iOS or Android emulator. Um, we included this. We use click to inspect. We use breakpoints, the URL bar for routing. We've seen the locks integration. We've developed components in isolation and we can also adjust the device settings on the fly. So the rest of this is just uh, creating a launch file, um, talking about how you set up your Android and iOS simulator and then also development of the package itself. But what I've seen so far and my first impression is that first of all, there are definitely some bugs. So if you get invited to the beta, expect that it's maybe a bit slow. You need to tinker a bit around. As you've seen, I, in this video, cut out most of the things, but it took me like an hour or so to uh, figure out stuff, to get the preview things to work, um, to get the window be in the right position and stuff like that. So this is a beta and I expect there be bugs in that beta. However, and that brings me to point number two, is that this represents a really, really, really great idea for React Native developers. Click to inspect. This is something web developers love and take as granted. And if we can have this for React Native development, once again, a big step forward, just like bringing Tailwind to React Native, bringing click to inspect to development, iOS and Android developers would love to have that feature. Then, of course, we have the breakpoint stuff. And yeah, all of that is cool. But what I found impressive as well is the development of components in isolation. I've seen this before and I had no idea if this could work, but it turns out, yes, it can actually work. And I think if you're probably not yet working with Storybook, this is a great uh, chance to focus on creating specific components in isolation, isolated from the rest of your page. And of course, we got all of the stuff like navigating around using the routes from Expo Router that are integrated so you can like quickly go there. I think they may be gonna integrate something that will automatically find all the routes that shouldn't be too hard based on the .expo folder in your project. So 
You don't need to like go to the page once and then it turns up in the menu. So I think the React Native IDE is really impressive. Uh, awesome job at uh, software mention. I talked with Christoph on the Galaxies on the Rocket Ship podcast before. So I will link to that episode. That was like somewhere fall or December last year when he first announced this. Uh, and now it's finally looking like this is becoming an actual thing. I wasn't sure at that point because it was an early project and I thought mm, maybe this is not going to happen, but it looks like the React Native IDE is happening. So what are your thoughts? Have you tried out the React Native IDE? What uh, do you think about everything that you've seen in the video? Please let me know in the comments. I'm pretty sure Christoph and the team of Software Mention will also mention, uh, will monitor the comments and questions you might have below this video. So put them down and let me know what you think. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button, check out galaxies.dev if you want great React Native courses, and I will catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon. Thank <laughs> you.